welcome everyone. We just wanted to welcome you all to um, Shit Girl Say. It's just an open forum talking about stereotypes and gender. Um, I'm Ashley Liniak. I'm Taylor McKeever. And I'm Brittany Dash. And this is Dr. Yutel. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, throughout hi most of history, like many, women have been restricted because of stereotypes. However, as years and decades have passed, the female sex has also passed some major milestones. We'd like to share with you a brief timeline of women's history in the media. In 1899, the first stunt girl was Nellie Bly. In 1972, Miss Magazine was first launched. In 1974, Barbara Walters was the first woman to anchor an American evening news program on a major network. In 1987, Congress proclaims March National Women's History Month. In 2006, Katie Couric was the first female anchor to host her own weekday network evening news program, an anchor managing editor of CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. And in 2012, 2012, excuse me, the Equal Rights Amendment has still not been passed. So what we first like to address is what is gender? Gender is defined as the physiological and emotional characteristics of individuals. So what does it mean to be feminine and what does it mean to be masculine? Some characteristics associated with being feminine are being weak, um, inferior, passive, and dependent. Some characteristics associated with being masculine are success, confidence, self-reliance, and aggression. Now I'd like to introduce Brittany to speak about um, what it means to do gender. Okay, so doing gender, there are two items. The first item is your biology, which is your nature. That's your genetic makeup, your DNA, and how you create it, and your body parts. Um, the second part is your culture, and that's your nurture, and that's how you were brought up, the people you're around, your background. So I have a question for all you guys. Um, which has the bigger influence on how people understand gender? Culture. 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 Do any of you guys think it's the same? <laughs> everyone, everyone just went back to changing. <laughs> All right, well, we, we learned in our class that it is a mix. It is how you are brought up. It is how you're designed. But it all together really does come to be your gender. So some examples to consider. I just want to know what you guys think about these topics. Um, for every girl who is tired of acting weak when she is strong, there is a boy who is appearing strong when he feels vulnerable. It's kind of like the opposite side of what, how everyone feels. So going through all these, they all have the same kind of meaning. Like, for every girl who's tired of being called oversensitive, there's a boy who fears, it, who is gentle and, to, and wants to weep. For every girl who has thrown um, out her easy break, who, every girl who has thrown out her easy bake oven, there's a boy who wants to find one. So you can see how there's always those kind of people that are like, it's not the typical stereotype for every single kind of person. So basically, for our, object, our, object, our objectives today, we want to. Um, critically view the social media and its relations to the gender stereotypes, and we also want to raise awareness on how social media can influence and emphasize the negative stereotypes about gender. All right, so in watching this video, um, we've learned in our class um, some different communication theories, and when watching the video, just um, some topics to kind of think about as um, viewers. Um, I'm going to talk about the direct effect theory, and that talks about how, um, as an audience, when you're watching videos, you are kind of passive and not aware of what's going on in the actual video. Um, it kind of goes with like lyrics and singing songs, like you just listen to the beat, not so much the content and the meaning of it. Um, viewers are essentially like unknowing of the effects um, when watching the video. And we really picked Chick Girl Say because um, as a culture, we watch the videos and laugh at them and think they're really funny, but really don't understand the gendered meanings behind them. And then for the other uh, theory, um, cultivation theory. Um, viewers have, um, there's a distortment between um, reality and fantasy. So what that really means is um, when, when you watch the videos, you're kind of watching a fantasy of what girls actually act like and what they're portrayed as, but in reality, girls aren't always like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then just some uh, questions to consider when you're watching the clips. Um, are stereotypes present in the clip, whether it be like 
for women or men, and then um, how is gender represented in the clip, um, what actions do people in the video um, consider feminine, um, do you find the content of the video humorous or offensive or both, so I'm glad we have a mixture of male and female so we can get both sides of that, and then why do um, viewers not have any negative reactions towards these type of videos, so as you're watching these and as you first saw them, um, was your reaction negative or was it more positive, did you think it was funny and not really think much of it. And then, um, have women really come a long way or are they still judged because of their gender? So we're gonna take a look at the um, videos now. Right. Yeah, we just have two of the videos. So just try to remember the questions to consider and um, just we want to gauge your reactions. Do you know anything about computers? What's wrong with my computer? Hey, are you near a computer? Can you read this and see if it makes sense? Can you look something up for me? Could you do me a huge favor? Could you do me a huge favor? Could you not do that, please? Could you pass me that blanket? Could you turn it up a bit? Sorry, can you just turn it down? Oh, that's such a good sleep. I think I have like six this morning. Do my bag. Do you want to my purse? <laughs> Did I lock the door? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> listen to this email. Listen, 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 shut up. How's your mom? Do you open this for me? I don't want a hot dog. Do you want to split a cookie? Is that a mojito? Is that lip balm? This is my water. Is that a coffee I make at home? Is that hummus? Is that hummus? <laughs> That's not okay. That is so not fair. <laughs> that is so true. Try some. Does this taste funny to you? Smell this. So good, right? So good, right? Ooh, is this bacon? That just chips away from me. I know. Why? That's what that means water. Ice cream makes me cough. <coughs> actually just like to start by saying, just making a couple of really quick observations and maybe setting the stage. Um, and then uh, I think these questions are fantastic and they, I think, will spark a lot of discussion. I'm probably the worst person to have do this because I don't, I'm just going to say it, I don't find these videos offensive at all. I, <laughs> um, partly because I think that they're a little bit accurate, like how I just did that. <laughs> that chip thing is me. And I don't think of myself as an especially girly girl or an especially feminine person. Um, and so what I'm actually kind of interested in is, um, as the panel up here was talking about, how do the videos do gender? If gender is about biology, if gender is about culture and sort of sociocultural influences and relationships, how do the, I'm, I'm actually less interested in how the videos represent women and how the videos do gender. And so a couple of things I might just draw your attention to, um, I study literature, I also study film, um, and so I'm interested in essentially performativity, right? How are we performing gender in these videos? And so a couple of things I might draw your attention to is, um, I'm so glad you did the second one because I think that the, the way that the body is depicted is fascinating. 
this character's relationship to his slash her body and the focus on food and the focus on gesture, I think is really interesting. Um, why is this not drag? Why is this not a guy in drag? What's the guy doing to make himself more like a girl than a guy dressed like a girl? So the, that would be something I would, I would maybe wonder about. Um, is it stereotypical? And do we have stereotypes because they are actually true? And is it funny? And if, if it's funny, why is it funny? Is it funny because it's true? Why does the comedy work to temper other kinds of reactions that we might have? Um, and I would also say that if maybe ask, and this would maybe be my last question and I'd open it up, um, what sorts of themes and motifs come up again and again in the videos? Right? Like one of the things that strikes me in the second one especially is when she's walking and she says, oh, a dog needs water. <laughs> what an interesting little moment of aw, empathy, sympathy for this creature. Look at all of the ways that the girl in Shit Girl say, what is she saying? She's saying, listen, 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 listen. Girls do that. We don't want to listen to you. You talk too much. But wait, no, it's actually connect, communicate, reaching out, relationships. Um, and I think that's actually one of the things that makes them sort of human and touching in a way. That just, that's, that's me. That's my reaction. Um, and so, what do you think? What, did you, what do you notice watching it a couple more times and maybe thinking about it in the context of the questions and the, the interesting sort of content and theories that the folks up here are talking about? No one has any reaction. <laughs> did you guys laugh because it's true, or like, why did you laugh? Do you know someone that has acted acted like that, or do you act like that? It's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of girls. Go ahead. I know with me, like, when she's like, oh, I have to laugh. It's a lot. Of girls. Like, <laughs> she yells and she's like, you really need to like. No, it's constantly. Like, do I try really my straightener? Like, <laughs> like, it's just like I'm laughing because I feel like I can relate to the whole bit. Mm -hmm. And do you consider yourself a real girly girl? I guess after that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Any guys? That was funny. <laughs> Why do you think it was funny? It's fairly accurate for a good amount of girls. I guess I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a video with such success if it wasn't to some extent. I feel like a lot of girls don't even realize they're like that until they watch something like this and hear it and you're like, oh my god, I say all that stuff. So. Yeah, I think what makes it more funny is that it's a guy doing it. If it was just like a girl like us like acting out that way, we'd probably be like, okay, like I get it. Since it's a guy, it makes it funnier. And that could kind of make it offensive too, but like, it's just so true that it's really not offensive. I don't think anybody here is offended by that. It's funny that a guy like realizes that yeah. that's how girls are. And like, we don't even realize it until we actually watch it. That was the thing I liked about it the most, honestly. I felt like I liked that guy so much for observing <laughs> yeah. women so closely that he could do that. I felt like, you are listening. Yeah, when I say, listen, you are. And that's what it looks like. Oh, And I feel like your point about how it works because it's a guy is brilliant. Because what you see is something that's both familiar and not. Right? We, the, the behaviors are familiar, but it's, it, it looks slightly off because it's a guy doing it back at you. And so it's mirroring you in ways that you might not recognize immediately. And then you see because, ooh, slightly, slightly askew. Yeah, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody um, have any stereotype and character, and also the ways that we depend on character so much for humor. Um, and so we laugh because of, because of the act of caricaturing, um, but should that also be the thing that's making us uncomfortable? Because are we all actually just a bundle of stereotypes, in a way? Yeah, I think the only reason it would be offensive is if it made us look like we were stupid. And it's just like little quirky things, little, not, it's like not make us look like we're dumb. Thing that's not like embarrassing, you know, saying, listen, listen, that's not 
embarrassing either. Because <laughs> they're making us out to look like, you know, dumb blondes or dumb girls or girls that drive bad. That can be a little bit more offensive. But this is just like funny little things that we don't realize that we do throughout the day. What about the technology one, the first one? The first one we showed about, like, computers. How do you do this? How do you turn this on? Oh, yeah. But I guess that's still the same thing, though. Yeah. It's not as yeah, I wasn't. Because they did it in a funny way that it shouldn't be offensive. Because mm -hmm. it's not, like, trying to degrade women. It's just, like, I mean, some people could see it as, like, the video is pointing out flaws, but it's doing it. Not, like, flaws, it's just pointing them out to, like, I like have humor about it to like bring out the good of it. You know? like, mm -hmm. It's not bad that you're doing it if a guy notices that he took the time to like, notice everyone does little things here and like make a whole video about it. So. It's definitely different that you made it kind of into a joke rather than like a regular guy just like calling you out on it and like being serious <coughs> about it. Because then you'd be like, geez, like back off. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Back off. Me? Yeah, him. <laughs> him. this kind of whole discussion ties really well with this slide because it's um, kind of understanding how um, certain genders should act so I think the video is a really good example of how women think that they should act so as like a female you know you see this video you think it's funny but you also like Brittany said 
um, take advantage of the fact that you can kind of get a guy to do stuff for you and you know you might dumb yourself down but like in the end they'll still help you so I think this um, I think this video really ties into kind of how we view our genders you know as a female like I'll take advantage of you know a guy helping me with the computer because I don't really want to learn how to use one and if they know like I'm gonna have them show me so um, I think this is a good example and um, just to go along with um, the slide, can anyone think of items that maybe um, in their lives or like in the media um, shape gender? Like where else do you see like gender roles being um, kind of portrayed? I would say magazines, like girls are supposed to be thin, you know, big boobs, big butt, guys would be big, muscular, perfect face, makeup. Like if you look through magazines, you look at these women. Like I know for me when I'm looking at uh, Victoria's Secret bathing suits, I'm just like, oh my god, bathing suits are so cute, but it looks good. Um, I was gonna say like in different roles in like the workplace, um, like if you're on a construction site, some guys think you can't like saw the wood and like you really can, but they still think like you're a female and you can't think of that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, as far as like how it influences how gender should act, um, like girls have the mindset that they should be like helpless and like rely on the guy.
I mean, one thing I will say about women that I've met at Widener and working here over the last however long I've been working here, not not a helpless bunch of ladies, I have to say. Like, you seem kind of tough. And so um, this idea that we're deliberately performing, I think, is kind of an interesting one, too. I'm sorry. How much of this is, like, you know, it seems like the context has always been kind of critical, like people were offended. Mm -hmm. but how much of this is positive reinforcement? To just like, you know, you see the old Juliet Lewis and they're fun and it's exciting. How much of that is just kind of almost justifying that behavior for, for, for women? Hmm. I, I actually think I'd like to hear from you guys on that. You guys are sort of the experts on how media reinforces certain kinds of stereotypes. Well, I think like going back to the video, how yeah, it is like, it is funny, but it also is like true. I don't think it's like intentionally harming people. Wait, what was your exact question? <laughs> how much of it is positive reinforcement so that it's just like, oh yeah, you know, that's how we are, and we should be proud, you know, that we're, you know, that this is, this is what we do. You know, it's just kind of like signs and symbols of what being a girl is like. Girl, like girl is, you know, <laughs> femininity. I don't even know. know. It's so almost yeah. like glorifying like stereotypes. In a yeah. positive way. Yeah, in a positive way, yeah. Because it is funny and like you laugh, so like they can't be that bad stereotypes. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I don't know. I guess it is somewhat positive reinforcement. I mean, like I'm not offended by it, and I know I do all those things, and like I don't feel stupid because of it, and I know like it's stereotypical view of a girl, but yeah. Oh, um, I don't think it's more of like something like that we like we should be proud of. It's just the fact that it makes us feel better because it's okay. Like, if that's how we act, but it's okay, like, we can make a joke out of it. So it's not like I'm being, like, that's how I am, and, like, I'm proud of it. But, like, I'm, I'm proud that, like, no one's judging me, like, it, is, it can be brought out and made fun of, but in, like, a good way. Mm -hmm. It's also positive that a guy noticed it. He noticed <laughs> how we were. I feel like that's a really complicated way to answer that question. If a guy notices it, it must be okay. Yeah. No, yeah. not like that. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> All right, never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> If you break down some of the different clips, like the one clip that stood out to me, I guess because it, I can relate to it and it resonates with me, is the, oh my gosh, this is so good, taste this. And it's kind of like what we were talking about today. It's kind of women like to share, whether it's sharing kind of verbal kind of innermost secrets that we have or share something that we really enjoy. That's a way for us to create intimacy. So when I saw that, I laughed because I could easily see myself doing it. And it's all in goodwill. So I'm OK with that perpetuating that particular stereotype because it was more kind of caregiver, bring people into the fold. Um, but I could also laugh at myself because I'd be the first one to stand and look in the mirror and say, oh my God, do I look like a doily? Like if I had that dress on too. <laughs> so I can also laugh. And so I don't know that it's a stereotype and it's not insulting me, but that would be the more insecure kind of do I want to present myself looking like a doily versus actually a cute dress kind of thing. So I, so I'm OK with it. I don't think it's necessarily safe to be negative about it. Yeah, for me, it's the one where she's digging through her purse, and when she stands, and it's like the, did I turn off my straightener? Did I lock the door? Because for me, I feel like that's actually pointing at the ways that women, in the, in seeming to be disorganized, are actually in some ways quite organized, and actually have quite a bit of control over their surroundings, and sometimes they might need other people to help them with that, but it's still sort of, I, I, yes, I do have my life together. Here I am, walking down the street, I did what I was supposed to do. I think there's someone in the back, and then I saw him. Maybe like to just go off the sharing thing, like maybe that's why like women act helpless because to us that is our sharing. Like how many women ask their boyfriends or husbands to go to the mall and shop with them when they know that they hate it, we don't do anything with them, but we still want them to come and share the experience, but guys might look at that as helpless. Mm -hmm. So the things that they're portraying as helpless here might just be us trying to share and be intimate with them. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, I, was say, I mean, I think that men do the same thing that women do, but they do it a lot more internally. Like, you see a man that goes to class, he didn't dress up just because he wanted the boys to see how good he looked today. He did it because he thinks that a pretty little girl up there is good, you know. But girls, we don't dress for another guy. We dress to impress other girls. We dress to impress ourselves. Like, it's basically for ourselves but for them, too. But they don't, you know, it's not like they walk into a crowd of guys and they put you on a new shirt. You know what I mean? So they do the same things that we do, more internal. Right, right. The, 
something interesting that you just did there, I laughed, you were being funny, right? You, again, sort of using humor to talk about some of these things that everybody does. And you know, they might be stereotypes, they might be caricatures, but humor is one of the ways that communities bond. It's how cultures bond. And so if we can share a joke about something like this, I, I do feel a little bit like that's positive um, because we're all recognizing one another. And you also pointed out the ways that we're, we're always, in some ways, performing socially, right? Guys are performing a certain version of guyness. Girls are performing a certain version of girlness for other guys, for other girls, for each other. A lot of just being a social <coughs> is performing. So that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, from a guy's point of view, uh, I think it's a luxury to have women uh, Because they say the person that's home in mind, your guy will be more reluctant to say anything. You won't say anything at all. But uh, I think it's, a, it's kind of great to say what's on your mind as soon as it happens, as soon as you're feeling it. Uh, I know me personally, if I need to help uh, fixing something, I'll just start banging it into a breeze. And uh, I won't get anything out of it, but it'd probably be a good idea just to ask somebody. Do you have anything else to say with your slide, even though we already kind of all talked about it? I've been talking way too much. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> no, I think, we, I think people really kind of ran with a lot of very cool stuff, sort of the visual aspects of the clips, um, the responses, and the ways that our responses are sort of you know, conditioned by the media, by culture, by interactions with people we know in personal lives and social settings, work life, things like that. It's all sort of connected, like you guys were saying right at the beginning. Um, I guess just to wrap things up, we want to thank everyone for coming. And um, just as like we do a lot, a lot of uh, stuff with media and looking at videos and YouTube and um, social media, um, just some things to be aware of. And you know, I think we had a really good discussion about like gender and stereotypes in videos. So just some final thoughts. Just when you go and you go to the movies and you you know you watch YouTube videos, um, just to you know really analyze and look that. Um, gender roles and stereotypes are present. So um, I guess one of the things would always be like an active media consumer. So like I said, when you go to the movies, you know, do look and see that there are stereotypes being portrayed and, you know, do you agree with them? Do you not agree with them? And try not to fall, like, with, uh, don't fall for the stereotypes presented in these movies like we all talked about. Oh, and always question your content. Now that you've had this presentation, hopefully you can go review media and you'll see some of these stereotypes and things like that. Go ahead. And if you're interested in tonight's presentation, <laughs> you heard that if you're interested in TV roles, um, there are two other programs that are coming up. On Wednesday, the 21st of March, we'll have Women's Images and Advertising. So that'll be at 7 o'clock and that'll be at the Quick Center. And then there'll be sitcoms then and now. So if you like the older sitcoms and you want to look at how 
families are represented. That's Monday the 26th, and that will be the first consent. So we hope to see you there. Yeah. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you.